This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Current Superstitions Collected from the Oral Traditions of English-Speaking Folk By Fanny Dickerson Bergen Chapter 1 Babyhood 1. The bairn that is born on fair Sunday Is bonny and loving and blithe and gay. Monday's bairn is fair in the face. Tuesday's bairn is full of grace. Wednesday's bairn is loving and giving. Thursday's bairn works hard for a living. Friday's bairn is a child of woe. Saturday's bairn has far to go. Massachusetts 2. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is sour and sad. Thursday's child is merry and glad. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child must work for a living. But the child that is born on the Sabbath day is blithe and bonny, good and gay. Baldwinsville, New York Some put it, Sunday's child shall never know want. 3. He who is born on New Year's morn will have his own way as sure as you're born. 4. He who is born on an Easter morn shall never know want or care or harm. 5. A child born on a saint's day must bear the saint's name. It is unlucky to take away the day from it. Catholic Superstition 6. Thursday has one lucky hour, just before sunrise, for birth. Baptism 7. If a child cries out during baptism, it is the devil going out of it. Niagara Falls, Ontario 8. It is lucky for the child to cry at baptism, but unlucky for the godmother to wear mourning. 9. If twins are brought to baptism at the same time, christen the boy first, or else he will have no beard, and the girl will be beggared. Physiognomy 10. An open hand in a baby is a sign of a generous disposition, but a habit of closing the fingers indicates avarice, or, as we say, closed-fistedness. Cambridge, Massachusetts. 11. If a child favors its father, it is good luck for it. It will get on well in the world. Salem, Massachusetts. 12. A baby that has two crowns will live in two continents or kingdoms. Massachusetts. 13. A double crown on the head means that the owner will break bread in two kingdoms. Northern Ohio. 14. Two crowns will never be satisfied. This is a sign of a very changeable disposition. Chestertown, Maryland. 15. A baby born with a veil over its face has good luck. General. 16. A baby born with a veil over its face will never be drowned. Many sailors are known to wear the call with which they were born about the person as a charm against death by drowning. Sailor's Superstition. Introduction to the World 17. Take the baby first into the sunlight on Sunday. Put it into short clothes and make all changes on that day. 18. To make a child rise in the world, carry it upstairs, or to the attic first. Mifflintown, Pennsylvania. 
19. The baby must go upstairs before it goes downstairs, or it will never rise in the world. Massachusetts. 20. To be a bright baby, it must go up before it is carried down, and it must be bumped to the attic roof for luck. New England. 21. A young baby was taken up a short step-ladder by its nurse before being for the first time carried downstairs, lest it should die before it was a year old. From Holyoke, Massachusetts. 22. A child will have a nature and disposition similar to that of the person who first takes him out of doors. Georgia. 23. The first time a baby is taken out of its room, it must be taken up, or it will not go to heaven. If the door of the room steps down, then the person carrying the baby must step up on a chair or book with the baby in her arms. North Carolina 24. Let the baby have or touch the thing he starts after on taking the first step and he will always get what he wishes. If it be the moon, then let him touch something light, on which its light shines. 25. When taking the child into your arms for the first time, make a good wish for him. If you give him his full name, and he opens his eyes, and looks at you, answers to his name, it is good luck. 26. To be a bright baby, it must fall out of the crib before it is eleven months old. Brookline, Massachusetts. 27. If a baby does not fall out of bed, it will be a fool. Eastern Massachusetts. 28. A child's tumbling out of bed is a sign he will never be a fool. Maine. 29. To drink water out of a bucket which is being carried on a child's head stops its growth. Virginia. 30. To step over a young child stops its growing. Virginia. 31. About 1860 the Alabama negresses believed that if anyone stepped on their pickaninnies it would dwarf them. 32. Pass a baby through a window, and it will never grow. South Carolina. 33. Do not go for the first time into the room where the infant is without removing the veil and gloves. 34. If the cradle cap of a baby be combed with a fine tooth comb, the child will be blind. Labrador. 35. A baby should not look into a glass before it is a year old. If it does, it will die. Deer Isle, Maine. 36. Hold a baby to a looking glass. He will die before he completes his first year. Massachusetts. 37. If you let a child look into a looking-glass before it is a year old, it will cut its teeth hard. Baltimore, Maryland, Negro, and Virginia. 38. It is bad luck not to weigh the baby before it is dressed. When it is first dressed, put the clothes on over the feet, instead of the head, for good luck. 39. The common nurse has an objection to weighing a newborn baby. 40. Always give a baby salt before it tastes aught else. The child will not choke, and in general it is a good thing to do. Mansfield, Ohio. First Actions 41. If a child cries at birth and lifts up one hand, he is born to command. 42. If the baby smiles in its sleep, it is talking with angels. 
43. If a baby yawns, the sign of the cross should be made over it, that the evil spirit may not enter. From Niagara Falls, Ontario. While tying on a baby's cap, repeat. Look up there and see a fly. Look down there and see it die. Its chin will follow the direction indicated, and the tying is hastened. Brookline, Massachusetts. Various. 45. First a daughter, then a son. The world is well begun. First a son, then a daughter. Trouble follows after. Maine and Massachusetts. 46. First a son, then a daughter. You've begun just as you order. Brookline, Massachusetts. 47. Rock a cradle empty. Babies will be plenty. Peabody, Massachusetts. 48. Rock the cradle empty. Have children a plenty. Rock the chair empty. Have sickness a plenty. Nashua, New Hampshire. 49. To rock the cradle when the baby is not in it will kill it. From New York. 50. If the empty cradle be rocked, the baby will have the colic. New York and Ohio. 51. The first time a baby is taken visiting, if it is laid on a married couple's bed, there will be a baby for that couple. Salem, Massachusetts. 52. The mother who gives away all the clothes of her dead baby will eventually be comforted by the coming of another child. 53. However many children a woman may have, the last will be of the same gender as the first, and they will look alike. Maine and Massachusetts. 54. One article of an unborn infant's wardrobe must be left unmade or unbought, or the child is liable not to live. Salem, Massachusetts. 55. A baby's nails must not be cut with scissors before it is a year old. It will make it steal. North Carolina. 56. To cut a baby's fingernails deforms it. If the baby is a month old, to do this will cause the child to have fits. Georgia. 57. To allow a child to look into a mirror before it is a month old will cause it to have trouble in teething. Georgia. 58. Tickling a baby causes stuttering. Georgia. 59. If an infant be measured, it will die before its growing time is over. Georgia. End of chapter 1 Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox, Fall 2006Childhood. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Current Superstitions by Fanny Bergen, Chapter 2. Superstitions numbered 60 through 100. Asseveration. A child to whom is told any story which he considers remarkable will, will usually reply by an expression of skepticism, such as really and truly, honestly, earnest now, or you're fooling. The first speaker answers by some formula or asseveration as honor bright in New England, deed deed and double deed in Pennsylvania, true as I live, or hope I'll die if it isn't so, or simply hope I'll die, general in the United States. A formula of asseveration in Maryland and Pennsylvania is, 
I cross my heart accompanied by the sign of the cross. A sign resembling that of the cross is made on the chin or throat. You won't tell? No. Well, cross your throat. Cambridge, Massachusetts. When a child wishes to make an asseveration, he wets his finger on his mouth and signs a cross on his throat. Salem, Massachusetts. In asseveration, the proper method is to use the words, Hope to die if I don't, the speaker drawing a forefinger across the throat from ear to ear. Biddeford, Maine. Asseveration in Maine and Massachusetts is often made by the following formula. First boy, honor bright. Second boy, hope to die. First boy, cut your throat. Second boy draws finger across throat. This is the strongest possible form of oath that can be taken by any boy. Little girls, without any idea of the meaning, employ the following formula of asseveration. Certain, true, black and blue. A variant of the first line, certain and true, Massachusetts. A form fuller than the preceding, certain, true, black and blue, lay me down and cut me in two. A boy who desires to tell an extravagant story without being guilty of a lie would point with his thumb over his left shoulder. If he should succeed in accomplishing this without the observation of the boy to whom he is talking, so much the better. Biddeford, Maine. In my school days, if a boy crossed his fingers, elbows, and legs so the act might not be noticed by the companion accosted, no blame was attached to the falsehood. New York City. The addition of the words in a horn justify a falsehood. In the childhood of the informant, it was not considered honorable to express the words in such manner that they could not be heard by the child with whom conversation was carried on. Cambridge, Massachusetts. In making a false statement, it was proper to say over the left. This was often uttered in such manner that the person addressed should not perceive the qualification. Or, the statement would be made, and after it had been taken in and believed, the words over the left would be added. Ohio and Cambridge, Massachusetts. A formula for making a false statement, as true as I lie here, said as one fools gives free scope to white lies. Roxbury, Massachusetts. An imprecation of child, children against disloyalty. Tell tal tit, your tongue shall be slit, and every dog in our town it shall have a bit. Ohio. Challenge. To stump another boy to do a thing is considered as putting a certain obligation on him to perform the action indicated. The phrase is sometimes used, although the person giving the stump may not himself be able to accomplish the feat. We used to dare or stump one another to eat green chuckberries. Brookline, Massachusetts. Daring or stumping is or has been common among children generally. Sometimes it is to jump a certain distance, sometimes to skate out on thin ice, or to touch something very hot. Once in Ohio, several lads were collected together about a spring. One of them drew a pail of fresh water and by chance brought up a small live fish. One of the boys stumped his companions to eat the fish alive without dressing or cooking. The boys took the stump, one quickly cut up the unfortunate little animal, and each boy swallowed a bit. Often the dare is to eat some very untoothsome morsel. Fortune. Put a mark upon a paper for every bow you get, and when you have one hundred, bury the paper and wish. When the paper is decayed, you will find your wish in its place. Cambridge and Bedford, Massachusetts. Children collect two or three hundred names of persons, asking each to give a bow with the name. This bow is expressed after the name on a sheet of paper on which the latter is written by this sign. It's a symbol, an H with a slanted crossbar. After all are collected, the paper is secretly buried face downward and then dug up after two or three months when money is sometimes found under it. North Cambridge, Massachusetts. At Christmas or New Year's, children, on first meeting, call out, My Christmas gift or New Year's gift, and the one who calls first is to receive a gift from the other. Mansfield, Ohio. Friendship. If two persons, while walking, divide so as to pass an obstruction one on one side and one on the other, they will quarrel. Children avert this catastrophe by exclaiming bread and butter, which is a counter charm. On the other hand, if they say pepper and salt, the quarrel is made doubly certain. So universal is the practice that many grown people of the best social classes, women, still involuntarily avoid such separation and even use the childish words. In country towns, when girls are walking with young men, if the latter pass on the other side of the tree, it is considered as rude, and as a token of indifference. In such a case, one girl will cast a meaning look on her companion, as much as to say he does not care for you. 
to use the local phrase, it would be said, so-and-so is mad with, naming the girl, Massachusetts. In passing a tree in the middle of the sidewalk, children used to pass it on one side going one way and on the other side going the other way for luck. Billerica, Massachusetts. Mythology. The stars are angels' eyes. Westminster, Massachusetts. The stars are holes made in the sky so that the light of heaven shines through. I remember as a child that this idea was suggested to me on seeing the effect of holes in the lampshade. I think, however, that I rather liked to suppose it true and firmly believed in the explanation. Cambridge, Massachusetts. As a child, I constantly looked into lilies and tulips in the expectation of finding fairies lying within them. Mansfield, Ohio. I remember that as a child, while walking with a companion, she cried, Why, a fairy lighted on my hand! The child believed that this had been the case. Cambridge, Massachusetts. The children used to fearfully look in the well, and on seeing the reflective face in the bottom would cry out, Face in the well, pull me down in the well, and would then run away quickly. Brunswick, New York. At the age of six or seven years, a child, while going to a spring to draw water, saw a little creature with wings fly from one star to another, leaving behind an arc of light. She cried to her aunt, Oh, aunt, I saw a little gold boy. Her aunt, somewhat shocked, rebuked the child who insisted on the literal truth of her vision. Mansfield, Ohio. Stick your thumb through a knot hole and say, O oh, Graham for the gray beard, without tooths or tongue, if you'll give me a little finger, I'll give you a thumb. Thumb'll go away, and little finger'll come. Go to the woodpile and say, Johnny with your fingers and Willie with your toes, and something will come out of the woodpile and tear off all your clothes. Gilsom, New Hampshire. Punishment. An eye-winker placed in the palm of the hand will cause the ferule to break when the teacher strikes the palm with it. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Pine tar or pitch in the hand will prevent the blows of the ferule from causing pain. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Believed by most schoolboys there at that time. Sport. At croquet, if your ball was about to be sent flying, the safeguard was to draw an emergency X with your mallet, saying crisscross. It made your enemy's foot slip, and many a girl would get mad and not play if you did it often. Brookline, Massachusetts. Children believe it is unlucky to step on the cracks in the flagstones, which are believed to contain poison. It is a game to walk a long distance on such stones without setting foot on the interstices. Cambridge, Massachusetts. When children are tired of swinging, or think it is time for the swinger to give way to another, the phrase is, Let the old cat die. After this has been said, it is unlucky to quicken the motion of the swing again. General. Various. When a child loses a tooth, if the tongue is not put into the cavity, a gold tooth will come in place of it. New York and Northern Ohio. The ideas of children about the significance of color are mixed. Thus, in croquet, no child in a town near Boston would take the red ball because it was supposed to mean hate. Blue is the favorite color. Red and yellow catch a fellow. Brookline, Massachusetts. Pink and blue, he'll catch you. Deerfield, Massachusetts. Pink and blue, he'll be true, Deerfield, Massachusetts. Black and white, hold him tight, Pennsylvania. An old superstition which still survives among children is that if they crawl over an older person and do not crawl back, they will never grow again. Haverville, Massachusetts. We used always as children to get X's scored with a pin on our new village gaiters. We were told it was to make them safe and take the slipperiness off. Brookline, Massachusetts. Children say that the one who takes the first bite of an apple that is to be passed about for eating will fail in his or her lesson. Chelsea, Massachusetts. Boys believe that they can prevent the stitch in the side which is liable to be induced by running by means of holding a pebble under the tongue. I believe I could run all day and not get tired if I could hold a pebble under my tongue, said one. Cambridge, Massachusetts. End of chapter 2. Three, physical Characteristics This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Caitlin City, Madison, Wisconsin, 2007. 
Current Superstitions by Fanny Bergen, Chapter Three: Physical Characteristics, Numbers One Hundred One through One Hundred Sixty Three. Beauty, One Hundred One. If a person is very handsome, it is a sign that he will have one of the infectious diseases of childhood, measles, whooping cough, etc., more than once. Massachusetts. Dimple, One Hundred Two. Dimple in chin, devil within. Chesterton, Maryland. 103. A dimple in the chin is lucky. Some say it shows you're no fool. 104. A dimple is the mark left by an angel's finger in turning up the face to kiss it when asleep. Pennsylvania. Ears. 105. Small ears indicate that a person is stingy. Large ones show that he is generous. General. 106. Large ears are the mark of a liar. Small ears show that one is truthful. Boston, Massachusetts. 107. Long, slim ears are a sign that you will steal. Chesterton, Maryland. 108. If the protuberance behind the ear is large, it indicates generosity. Massachusetts. Eyes and eyebrows. 109. Hazel eyes betoken a good disposition. Boston, Massachusetts. 110. If your eyebrows meet, you will be rich. Somerville and Bedford, Massachusetts. 111. A well-known children's rhyme runs, Blue eye beauty, do your mammy's duty. Black eye pick a pie, run around and tell a lie. Gray eye greedy gut, eat all the world up. General in the United States. 112. If the eyebrows meet, one is ill-tempered. General in the United States. 113. If the eyebrows are far apart, you will live away from home. If near together, you will live near home or at home. Massachusetts. 114. Heavy eyebrows are a sign of long life. Lawrence, Massachusetts. Fingernails. 115. Always keep your nails clean and you will be rich. Peabody, Massachusetts. 116. A white spot in the nail when it comes means a present. You get the present when it grows to the end and is cut. Boston, Massachusetts. 117. White spots on the nails of the left hand denote the number of lies one has told. Maine and Central Illinois. 118. Count on fingernail spots. Friends, foes, money, bows. Begin with the first nail spotted, and the noun falling to the last nail thus marked gives the sign. Deerfield, Massachusetts. 119. Another formula. First finger, a friend. Second finger, a foe. Third finger, a gift. Fourth finger, a bow. Fifth finger, a journey to go. Mansfield, Ohio. An almost identical variant is found in Prince Edward Island. Foot, 120. If your instep is high enough to have water flow under it, you are of good descent. Brookline, Massachusetts. 121. A mole on the sole of the left foot means trouble and hardships during life. Boston, Massachusetts. Forehead, 122. If there is a blue vein in the child's forehead extending down the nose, it is one of the surest signs of early death. Maine and Massachusetts. 123. Vertical wrinkles in the brow show the number of husbands one will have. Horizontal ones show the number of children. Northern Ohio. Hair. 124. Coarse hair indicates good nature. Fine hair, quick temper. Northern Ohio. 125. Red hair indicates a spitfire. Massachusetts and Chesterton, Maryland. 126. Beware of that man, be he friend or brother, whose hair is one color and mustache another. Portland, Maine. 127. The color of the hair growing on the neck indicates the color of the hair of one's future husband. 128. A single white hair means genius. It must not be pulled out. 129. If you pull out a white hair, two will come in its place. 
somewhat general in the United States. 130. Hair growing upon the upper lip of a woman means riches. Boston, Massachusetts. 131. The point formed by the hair growing on the forehead is called a widow's peak. Eastern Massachusetts. 132. When a woman's hair parts where it should not, it is a sure sign she will be a widow. Springfield, Massachusetts. 133. Draw a single hair from the head strongly between the thumb and fingernail. If it curls up, you are proud. St. John, N.B., and Prince Edward Island. The same result indicates that you are cross. Cape Breton. 134. Hairy arms mean wealth. Northern Ohio. 135. Hairy arms mean strength. General in the United States. 136. Scrape the fingernail and the thumbnail along a hair, and if by the third time it curls up, the owner is high-tempered. Boston, Massachusetts. 137. Put some of your hair in the fire. If it burns slowly, you will have a long life. If quickly, a short one. Chesterton, Maryland. Hand. 138. A straight line in the palm of the hand is an omen of early death. Massachusetts. 139. The letter formed by the veins on the inside of the wrist is the initial of the name of the future husband or wife. St. John, New Brunswick. 140. A person with an initial in his hand will be very fortunate in selecting a companion for life. Alabama. 141. In clasping your own hand, you put uppermost either your right or your left thumb. If the former, you are to rule. Vice versa, you yield. Brookline, Massachusetts. 142. If a thumb sticks up in the closed fist, you are either capable or honest, probably the latter, as thieves are said to double theirs in. New England. 143. If you cannot make your thumb and one finger meet around your wrist, you are a glutton. Province of Quebec. 144. If you cannot touch the tips of your little finger and first finger together behind the two middle fingers on both hands, then you will not marry the man you want to marry. Province of Quebec. 145. Clasp your fingers, and if the right thumb lap over the left, you were born in the daytime. If the left overlap, you were born at night. 146. The number of folds on your wrist as you bend your hand shows the number of thirties you are to live. Massachusetts. 147. If the ends of the fingers are capable of being bent far back, it indicates a thief. Moles. 148. A mole on the eyebrow denotes that one will be hanged. On the ear it denotes that he will be drowned. Chesterton, Maryland. 149. Mole above breath means wealth. 150. Moles on the neck Money by the Peck, Prince Edward Island and Northern Ohio. 151. A mole on the neck indicates that its owner will be hanged, Boston, Massachusetts. 152. A mole on the side of the neck means a death by hanging, Central Maine. 153. A mole on the arm indicates riches, Boston, Massachusetts. 154. Mole on your arm, live on a farm, Alabama. 155. A mole on the arm means that you will fight many battles and will be very successful in them. Prince Edward Island. Nose. 156. A vein across the nose is an omen of short life. General in the United States. Teeth. 157. A broad space between the teeth indicates a liar. Bidford, Maine. 158. Broad front teeth mean that one is generous. Bidford, Maine. 159. A space between the two front upper incisors signifies wealth. Mansfield, Ohio. 160. If the front teeth are wide apart, it means one can't keep a secret. If overlapping, one is closed-mouthed. Boston, Massachusetts. 161. Do not trust people with pointed teeth. Chesterton, Maryland. 162. If you have a space between your teeth, it is a sign that you will die of consumption. Baltimore, Maryland. 163. 
A lump, enlarged papilla on the tongue, is a sign one has told a lie. Mansfield, Ohio. End of chapter 3. Physical Characteristics. Projects. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Caitlin Sticko, Madison, Wisconsin, 2007. Current Superstitions by Fanny Bergen. Chapter 4 Projects. Numbers 164 through 302. Love divinations, or love charms, I have found, are popularly known as projects in parts of New England and on Mount Desert. On Prince Edward Island, and in various parts of the Canadian provinces, the practice of such divinations is usually spoken of as trying tricks. If a number of young people are together, one will say, let's try tricks. In the middle and western United States, the usual colloquial expression for these love divinations is trying fortunes. One girl will say to another at some appropriate time, let's try our fortunes. Apples. 164. Eat an apple at midnight before the glass, saying, whoever my true love may be, come and eat this apple with me. Holding the lamp in the hand, the true love will appear. Win, Maine. 165. Throw a whole apple paring on the floor after swinging it three times around your head. It will form your true love's initial letter. General in the United States. Apple Seeds. 166. When eating an apple, snap it with the fingers and name it for a person of the opposite sex. Count the fully developed seeds, all of the others are kisses, and the last one must correspond to the following formula. One's my love, two's my love, three's my heart's desire. Four I'll take and never forsake, five I'll cast in the fire. Six he love, seven she loves, eight they both love, nine he comes, ten he tarries, eleven he goes, twelve he marries, thirteen honor, fourteen riches, all the rest are little witches. Baldwinsville, New York some change the latter lines of this formula into thirteen they quarrel, fourteen they part, fifteen they die with a broken heart. 167. Similar rhymes commonly repeated in northern Ohio after naming an apple and counting the seeds are one I love, two I love, three I love, I say, four I love with all my heart, and five I cast away, six he loves, seven she loves, eight they both love, Nine he comes, ten he tarries, eleven he courts, and twelve he marries. Prince Edward Island and Mansfield, Ohio. 168. Lay in the hand four apple seeds, and have someone name them, then pick them up, saying, This one I love, all others above, and this one I greatly admire, and this one I'll take and never forsake, and this one I'll cast in the fire. St. John, New Brunswick. 169. A love divination by way of apple seeds, much practiced when a number of young people were spending the evening together, or perhaps by grown-up boys and girls in district schools as they ate their noonday lunch about the stove, was as follows. Two seeds were named, one for a girl and one for a young man, and placed on a hot stove or in front of an open fire. The augury, concerning the future relations of the young people, was derived from the behavior of the two seeds. If as they heated they jumped, away from one another, the two persons would become estranged or their friendship die. If the seeds moved nearer together, marriage was implied. If the one named for the girl moved towards the other, it signified that the young woman was fonder of the young man than he was of her, and so on. Northern Ohio 170. A common project in my girlhood was to place an apple seed on each of the four fingers of the right hand, that is, on the knuckles, first moistening them with spittle. A companion then named them, and the fingers were worked so as to move slightly. The seed that stayed on the longest indicated the name of your future husband. Stratham, New Hampshire. 171. Name apple seeds and place on the lids of the closed eyes. Wink, and the first to fall off shows the name of your future husband. Wynne, Maine, New York, and Pennsylvania. 172. 
To name apple seeds, put one on each temple, get some one to name them, and the one that sticks the longest will be the true one. 173. Name apple pips, put them on the grate, saying, If you love me, live and fly. If you do not, lie and die. Babies. 174. Kiss the baby when nine days old, and the first gentleman you kiss afterward will be your future husband. New England. Bed. 175. Go upstairs backward, into a chamber backward, and into bed backward. Drink some salt and water, and if you dream of someone bringing you drink, it will be your future husband. Maine and Salem, Massachusetts. 176. The first time two girls sleep together, let them tie two of their big toes together with woolen yarn, and the one with the shortest piece of broken string left attached in the morning will be married first. Northern Ohio. 177. If two girls on sleeping together for the first time tie their waist together with string or thread, and the thread gets broken in the night, the first man who puts his arm round the waist of either will have the first name of the man whom that girl will marry, whether that man is the one or not. Province of Quebec. 178. After getting ready for bed, in silence, take a ball of string and wind about the wrist, repeating, I wind, I wind, this night to find, who my true love's to be, the color of his eyes, the color of his hair, and the night he'll be married to me. Chesterton, Maryland. 179. Name the bedposts for four different men. The one you dream about, you will marry. General. 180. The first time you sleep in a room, name the corners each with a different man's name. The first corner you face on waking indicates whom you will marry. New England. The same thing is done with bedposts in Ohio. 181. Put four names of boys on four slips of paper, and take one blank slip. Intermingle them, and then without looking at them, put one under each leg of the bed and one under the pillow. The name of the last will be that of your future husband. Franklin, Massachusetts. 182. Rub the four bedposts with a lemon, and carry the lemon in the pocket the next day, and the first man you speak to you will marry. New Hampshire. Bible. 183. Read the third verse of the third chapter of Hosea, Joel, and Amos for three Sundays in succession, and the first gentleman you walk with you will marry. Nashua, New Hampshire. 184. Put the end of key in the Bible, on the verse of Solomon's song, reading, I am my beloved's, and he is mine. Close the book, and bind it round with string or garter, each girl supporting the key with the first finger of the right hand. One of them repeats a verse to each letter as the other girl names it, beginning the alphabet, till it turns at the initial of the future husband or lover. General in the United States. Birds. 185. When you see a turkey buzzard flying alone, repeat, Hail, hail, lonely, lonesome turkey buzzard! Hail to the east, hail to the west, hail to the one that I love the best! Let me know by the flap of your wing whether he, or she, loves me or not. Note the manner of the bird's flight. If it flaps his wings, your lover is true. If not, the lover is false. Tennessee. 186. When the call of the first turtle dove is heard, sit down and remove the shoe and stocking from the left foot. Turn the stocking inside out, in the heel of which, if a hair is found, it will be the color of the hair of the future husband or wife. Tennessee. In Mount Desert, Maine, and Prince Edward Island, the same project is tried on hearing the first robin. Buttons. 187. The coming husband is determined by repeating the following words, touching each button of the coat, vest, or dress in order. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, or doctor, lawyer, merchant chief, or doctor, lawyer, merchant cheat. Ohio. 188. With reference to the habitation to be occupied, big house, little house, pigsty, barn. New Hampshire. 189. As to the wedding dress, silk, satin, velvet, cotton, woolen. Massachusetts. 190. In regard to the vehicle, carriage, wagon, wheelbarrow, chase. Massachusetts. 191. 
The first of these button formulae is used by boys to foretell their profession in life. A friend remembers how in childhood his buttons were completely worn out by the continual practice of the inquiry. 192. With reference to the acquisition of a coat. Bought, given, stolen. Massachusetts. 193. Rich man, poor man, beggar, thief, doctor, lawyer, merchant, chief, said over by little girls on their back hair combs to find the occupation of their future husbands. New York. Four-leafed clover. 194. If a girl puts a two-leaved clover in her shoe, the first man who comes on the side where the clover is will be her future husband. Michigan. 195. Put a four-leaved clover in your shoe, and you will marry a man having the first name of the man whom you meet first after doing it. Province of Quebec. 196. With a four-leaf clover in your shoe, you will meet your lover. Michigan. 197. If the finder of a four-leaf clover puts it in her own shoe, she will marry the first person with whom she crosses a bridge. Michigan. 198. Put a four-leaf clover over the door. The first person to pass beneath will be your future mate. Newport, Rhode Island, and Michigan. Counting. 199. Count sixty white horses and one white mule, and then you will marry the first man with whom you shake hands. Chesterton, Maryland. 200. Count a hundred white horses and two white mules, and the first person you shake hands with you'll marry. Pennsylvania. 201. Count a hundred white horses during leap year. The first man that shakes hands with you after you have your hundred will be your future husband. Bedford, Massachusetts. 202. Count one hundred gray horses. One mule stands for ten horses, and the first gentleman with whom you shake hands is your intended. Alabama. 203. After meeting ninety-nine white horses and a brown one for the hundredth, the first person with whom you shake hands will be your future mate. Newport, Rhode Island. 204. Count five hundred colored people, and the next gentleman you meet you will marry. Cambridge, Massachusetts. 205. Count ninety-nine negroes and one white horse, and the first boy you answer yes or no to you will marry. South Boston, Massachusetts. 206. Count forty white horses. The first man you meet afterwards you'll marry. Champaign, Illinois. 207. In crossing a bridge, if one sees two white horses on it, in different teams, and wishes at once for a man to marry her, she'll get him. Peabody, Massachusetts. 208. Count a hundred tips. A bow with the lifting of the hat. The hundredth will be your future husband. Eastern Massachusetts. 209. Count the buttons of an old boot. The number of buttons indicates the number of years before marriage. Massachusetts. 210. If you count the boards of the ceiling loft in a strange room before going to sleep, you will dream of your lover. Newfoundland. Daisy Petals. 211. Pull off the petals of a daisy one by one, naming a boy, or a girl as the case may be, at each one, thus, Jenny, Fanny, Jenny, Fanny, etc. The one named with the last petal is your sweetheart. The seeds which remain on the back of your hand after taking them up show the number of your children. 212. Common at the present time is the formula, He loves me, he loves me not. 213. To tell the fortune, take an ox-eye daisy and pluck the petals one by one, using the same words as have been given above for buttons, general in the United States. In Ohio and other western states, where the ox-eye daisy is not common, children use instead the bloom of the despised dog-fennel. 214. Fortunes are told by pulling off leaflets of a compound leaf, such as the locust, repeating, rich man, poor man, etc. Central Illinois. 215. Name a daisy, and then pull off the petals, ray flowers, one by one, saying yes, no, and if yes falls on the last, the person loves you, and vice versa. Alabama. A formula for daisy petals. He loves me, he don't. He'll have me, he won't. He would if he could, but he can't. New Brunswick. 217. If you find a five-leaf daisy, that is, one with five ray flowers, and swallow it without chewing, you will in the course of the day shake hands with your intended. Alabama. 218. Another. Hate her, have her. This year, next year, sometime, never. 
New Brunswick. 219. Another. He loves, she loves, hate her, have her, this year, next year, now, or never. Cape Breton. Girls repeat the last three lines only of the above rhyme. Prince Edward Island. Doorway. 220. Put the breastbone of a fowl over the front door, and the first one of the opposite sex that enters is to be your future companion. Alabama. 221. Hang over the door a corn cob from which you have shelled all but twenty grains. The first man that enters you'll marry. Arlington, Massachusetts. 222. Nail a horseshoe over the door, and the first one who enters is your true love. Massachusetts. 223. Hang a wishbone over the door. The first one who enters will be your lover. Somewhat general. 224. Two girls break a wishbone together. The one who gets the longest bit will remain longest unmarried, or, as the familiar rhyme runs, shortest to marry, longest to tarry. If the knot, that is, the flattened portion at the junction of the two prongs of the bone, flies away and does not stick to either prong, the two girls are to remain unmarried. Each girl puts her bit of the wishbone over a different door. The first man who enters either door is to marry the girl who has placed her bit of wishbone over the door. Prince Edward Island. Eggs. 225. Take an egg to your window. Break it over a knife. Remember the day and the date. Wish that your true love would come to you. If you go too high, he will be killed. Nashua, New Hampshire. 226. Put two eggs in front of the open fire on a very windy day, and soon two men will come in with a coffin. The man at the foot will be your future husband. Chesterton, Maryland. Negro. 227. One or more girls puts eggs to roast before an open fire, seating themselves in chairs before it. Each puts one egg to roast, and when her egg begins to sweat, it will sweat blood, she is to rise and turn it. At this time, the one whom that projector is to marry will come in through a door or window, all of which must be left open throughout, and take her vacant chair. If she is to die before she marries, two black dogs will enter, bearing a coffin, which they will deposit on her chair. Quaker Neck, Kent County, Maryland. 228. Boil an egg hard, take out the yolk, and fill its place with salt. Eat it before going to bed. The one you dream of as bringing you water is your future husband. Mansfield, Ohio. To be done by two girls in silence, going backward as they retire. Fingers. 229. Name each of the four fingers of one hand for some person of the opposite sex, then press them tightly together with the other hand. The one that hurts the worst indicates whom you will marry. Prince Edward Island. Garments. 230. Scatter your clothes in the four corners of the room, naming them. The man you are to marry will bring you your clothes in a dream. Maine. 231. The first time you sleep in a room, name the corners each a different man's name. The first corner you face on waking indicates whom you will marry. The same thing is done with bedposts in Ohio. 232. On your birthday, as you retire at night, take off your slipper or boot. Stand with your back to the door and throw it over your head. If the toe points to the door, you must go out of the chamber, a bride, before the year is out. You must not look at the boot until the morning. Bedford, Massachusetts. 233. At night, before going to bed, take one of your garters and tie it in a knot, and hang it on the bedpost above your head. While tying, repeat, This knot I tie, this knot I knit, to see the young man I haven't seen yet. Chesterton, Maryland. 234. Young girls on going to bed at night place their shoes at right angles to one another, in the form of a letter T, repeating this rhyme. Hoping this night my true love to see, I place my shoes in the form of a T. Northern Ohio. 235. The first time you sleep in a house, upon retiring, place the shoes in the form of a T, and say over, My true love by and by for to see, be as she or he be, bear as she or he may, the clothes she or he wears every day. Boston, Massachusetts. 236. Catch the four corners of a handkerchief up in the hand, then let someone wishing to try her fortune draw two. If she gets two corners on the same side, she will not be married. If she gets opposite ones, she will be married. Prince Edward Island and Chesterton, Maryland. 237. A Rhyme on Stockings and Feet. 
Point your shoes towards the street. Leave your garters on your feet. Put your stockings on your head. You'll dream of a man you're going to wed. Eastern Massachusetts. 238. Put the chemise, inside out, on the foot of the bed, and under it a board with ashes upon it. Then go to bed backwards, saying, Whoever my true love may be, come write his name in these ashes for me. Win, Maine. 239. Place the heel of one shoe against the instep of the other for three nights in a row. You will dream of your future husband. Franklin, Massachusetts. 240. On Friday night, after getting all ready for bed, roll your petticoat up, and before lying down, put it under your pillow, repeating this verse. This Friday night, while going to bed, I put my petticoat under my head, to dream of the living and not of the dead, to dream of the man I am to wed, the color of his eyes, the color of his hair, the color of the clothes he is to wear, and the night the wedding is to be. Rock Hall, Maryland. Letters of the Alphabet. 241. Write names on three pieces of paper. Throw them up in the air in the dark. Feel for one. Put it under the pillow, and in the morning look at it to see the name of the man you are going to marry. Salem, Massachusetts. 242. Put pieces of paper, each one bearing one letter of the alphabet, in water face down, and place them under the bed. Those turned up in the morning are the initials of your future husband. Prince Edward Island and Northern Ohio. 243. Write the names of several men friends, each on a slip of paper. On three successive mornings choice is made from these. If the name drawn is always the same, it is the name of your future husband. If the lot falls differently every morning, you will never be married. 244. Write two names of possible lovers. Cross out the common letters. Touch the uncrossed letters, repeating in turn, love, friendship, hate, and the last uncrossed letter will indicate the state of the heart. Prince Edward Island, St. John, New Brunswick, and Northern Ohio. Midnight. 245. Go out at midnight and walk around a peach tree, repeating, Low for a foreigner, bark for a near one, crow for a farmer, Screek tree, screek, if I'm to die first. Quaker Neck, Maryland. 246. Eat an apple at midnight before the glass, saying, Whoever my true love may be, come and eat this apple with me, while holding a lamp in the hand. Your true love will appear. Win, Maine. 247. Set the table in silence for two at eleven o'clock p.m. with bread and butter and silver knives and forks. Two girls sit down at twelve and say, Whoever my true love may be, come and eat this supper with me. Win, Maine. Plants. 248. Take beans in the hand, go out of doors, and throw them against the window. The first man's name that you hear spoken is the name of the man you will marry. Connecticut. 249. Put three raw beans in your mouth, go out of doors, stand in front of someone's window, and listen. The first man's name you hear spoken will be either that of your future husband, or of the one having the same name. Salem, Massachusetts. 250. If a piece of brush or briar sticks to the dress, name it. If it drops, the lover is false. If it sticks, he is true. Northern Ohio. 251. Blow seeds from the dandelion until none remain, counting each puff as a letter of the alphabet. The letter which ends the blowing is the initial of the name of the person the blower marries. 252. Rub your hands in sweet fern. The first one you shake hands with afterward is your true love. Prince Edward Island. 253. Wear a piece of fern in the top of your shoe, and the first person you meet you will marry. New Hampshire. 254. Take a live-forever leaf, squeeze it to loosen the inner and outer skin. If it makes a balloon as you blow into it, you will be married and live a long time. If it does not, you will be an old maid. St. John, New Brunswick. 255. Stick a piece of live-forever up on the wall, and in whatever direction it leans, the lover will come from that quarter. Miramichi, New Brunswick. 256. Take two shoots of live-forever and pin them together on the wall. If they grow towards each other, the couple will marry. If away, they will become estranged. Nantucket, Massachusetts, and Western Massachusetts. 257. Break off a piece of daughter or love vine, and twirl it round the head three times, and drop it on a bush behind you. If it grows, the lover is true. If not, he is false. Tennessee. 258. Twist a mullion stalk nearly off after naming it. If it lives, he or she loves you. If not, not. Newton, Massachusetts, and Tennessee. 259. 
After proceeding as above, count the number of new shoots that spring up, if any. The number shows how many children will result from the marriage. Green County, Missouri. 260. Put a pea pod with nine peas over the door. The first one who comes under it you will marry. New England. 261. Pluck three thistles in bloom. Cut off the purple part and put the remainder of the flower in water overnight, after naming. The one that blooms out overnight you will marry. St. John, New Brunswick and Northern Ohio. 262. Saturday night, walk round a tall white yarrow three times, saying, Good evening, good evening, Mr. Yarrow. I hope I see you well to-night, and I trust I'll see you at meetin' to-morrow. Then pluck the head, put it inside the dress, and sleep with it. The first person you meet with to speak to at church will be your husband. Deerfield, Massachusetts. Ring. 263. Suspend a ring by a hair from the finger. Let it swing over a tumbler. The number of strokes against the side of the tumbler indicates the number of years of age of the future husband. Prince Edward Island. 264. Hang a gold ring over a glass of water from a hair, saying the name of some man. If the ring strikes the side of the glass three times, you will marry him. Willimantic, Connecticut. 265. Put three saucers on the table, and walk round it blindfolded three times, then put a finger in the saucer. One saucer contains a gold ring, one soap suds, and one is empty. Repeat twice, making nine in all. If one touches the ring, she will marry an unmarried man. If the suds, she will marry a widower. If the empty one, she will be an old maid. The one touched two out of three times is the fate. Central Maine. 266. If a piece of wedding cake is passed through a ring and put in the left stocking, then placed under the pillow and slept on three nights running, you will dream of your lover, or he or she will come to you. New England. Stars. 267. If you look at a bright star intently before retiring, you will dream of your sweetheart. Alabama. 268. Count nine stars for nine successive nights. If a rainy or cloudy night intervene, the charm is broken and the project must begin again. The person you dream of on the ninth night will be your future partner in life. Prince Edward Island. 269. Count nine stars for nine consecutive nights, and the person you dream of the last night is your intended. Prince Edward Island and Alabama. 270. Count nine stars for nine nights in succession, and the first young gentleman with whom you shake hands is to be your future husband. Eastern Massachusetts. 271. For three successive nights, look out of the window and name three stars. Walk to bed backward and without speaking. The one you dream of two nights out of three will be your husband. Central Maine. 272. Have someone call a star which you have picked out by the name of a young man. The next time you meet this man, if his face is towards you, he loves you. If his side, he likes you. If his back, he hates you. Province of Quebec and Bedford, Massachusetts. Tea Leaves 273. After drinking tea, turn the cup upside down, whirl it round three times, set it down in the saucer, whirl again, take it up, turn right side up, and look at the grounds. If all are settled in the bottom of the cup, you will be married right off. If they stay on the side, the number of grounds will be the number of years before marriage. The fine dust in the bottom means trouble, a wish, a letter, or a journey. Somewhat general in the United States. 274. Take a bow, a little stem from the tea, and put it in your shoe. The first man you meet you will marry. St. John, New Brunswick. 275. Sticks of tea in the teacup denote bow. Name them and bite them, and the hardest loves you best. Massachusetts. Walking abroad. 276. Go to walk and turn back. The first man you meet you'll marry. Massachusetts. 277. If you walk the length of seven rails of a railroad track, the first man that speaks to you after you get off will be your future husband. Bedford, Massachusetts. 278. Take a looking glass and walk backward to the wall, and you will see your future husband's picture. Nashua, New Hampshire. 278. If you walk with a gentleman for the first time, and have on new shoes and go over a bridge, you will marry him. Eastern Massachusetts. 280. If a young woman walking into a strange place picks up three pebbles and puts them under her pillow, she will marry the young man she dreams of. Carboneer, Newfoundland. 281. Run three times around the house, and on the third round a vision of your husband will rise before you. 
Alabama. Water. 282. Float two cambric needles on water and name them. If they float together, they'll marry. If they float apart, they won't marry. Petite Kodiak, New Brunswick. 283. Girls prepare basins of dirty and of clean water. If a blindfolded girl puts a stick with which she reaches about into the dirty water, she will marry a widower. If into the clean water, she will marry a young man. Labrador. 284. Place three basins on the floor, one containing dirty water, another clean water, and the third empty. Let the blindfolded, perhaps, person crawl up to them on her hands and knees. The one she touches will foretell her fate. The clear water means she is to marry a rich man, the dirty water a poor man, and the empty basin no man at all. 285. Make ready a mirror, a lamp, a basin of water, a towel, and soap. Go to bed backward, not speaking afterward, and lie awake till midnight. If your sweetheart comes and washes, combs his hair, and looks at you, you'll be married. If you don't see him, you'll see your coffin. Both sexes. Labrador. 286. When a pot is boiling over, put a small stick in one of the ears, and name it for the one you like the best. If he loves you in return, the water will cease to boil over. If not, it will continue. Double Creek, Maryland. 287. Let two girls wash and wipe the dishes together, then put a dish of water behind the door with a broom handle in it. Two men will come in, who will be the husbands of the two projectors. Deer Isle, Maine. 288. Run molten lead into hot water. The shape of the pellets formed shows the occupation of your future sweetheart. Labrador. 289. Pour molten lead on the hearth. The shape the metal assumes in cooling foretells the occupation of one's future husband general in the United States. Various. 290. On accidentally making two lines rhyme, kiss your hand, and you will be so fortunate as to see your lover before nine that night. Alabama. 291. Put a looking-glass under the pillow, and you will dream of your lover. Green Harbor, Newfoundland. 292. Tie a true lover's knot of shavings, and place it under the pillow. You will dream of your lover, even if at that time he is unknown to you. Newfoundland. 293. Steal a salt herring from a grocery store. Eat it. Don't speak after eating, and the first man you dream of will marry you. 294. Make a little ladder of sticks. Place it under the head at night, and you'll dream of your future husband. Patton, Maine. 293. Swallow a chicken's heart whole, and the first man you kiss afterwards will be your future husband. Wynne, Maine. 296. Take three grains of coffee. Put one notch on one, two on another, put them in a glass of water under your bed, and name them. The one that sprouts is the one you are going to marry. Alabama. 297. Light a match, and the way the flame goes shows where your future husband lives. Bedford, Massachusetts. 298. Stand two matches on a hot stove, sulfur and down, and name them for yourself and a marriageable acquaintance of the opposite sex. If both stand or fall together, it is a sign that you will live and die together. If one fall, it is a sign that one will leave the other. Cape Breton. 299. Go out in spring and turn up a brick on the ground, and look under it at the clay. The color of the clay denotes the color of the hair of your future husband. Chesterton, Maryland. 300. Cut your fingernails nine Sundays in succession, and your sweetheart will dine with you. Alabama. 301. Throw a ball of yarn into an unoccupied house, and holding the end of the yarn, wind, saying, I wind, and who holds? The one who is to be your future wife or husband will be seen in the house. Ohio. 302. Take a hair from your head. Have someone else take one from his cross them, and rub them over each other, and the last thing you say before one breaks will be the first thing said after you are married. Cambridge, Massachusetts. End of chapter 4「Section 5. Halloween and Other Festivals – This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Claire Gauget. Current Superstitions by Fanny Bergen. Chapter 5. Number 303-326. to 326. 
any of the projects quoted in the last chapter are perhaps more likely to be practiced on Halloween than any other times. However, as girls do amuse themselves by such fortune-seeking at other times, particularly the first time they sleep in a room, the various projects have been divided into two chapters according to the way in which the various narrators classed them. That is, when a charm was said to belong to Halloween, it was so classed. When no definite time was set for trying the charm, it was simply put under projects. Number 303. A Halloween custom is to fill a tub with water and drop into it as many apples as there are young folks to try the trick. Then each one must kneel before the tub and try to bite the apples without touching them with the hands. The one who bites one first will marry first. Alabama. On Halloween, hang an apple by the door, just the height of the chin. Rub the chin with saliva, stand about six inches from the apple, and hit the chin against the apple. If it sticks to the chin, you will be married, and your true love will stick to you. St. John N. B. A girl goes to a field on Halloween at midnight to steal cabbages. The first one whom she meets on her return will be her husband. Boston, Massachusetts. On Halloween at midnight, a young lady in her night dress walks backwards into the garden and pulls up a cabbage. She will see her future husband over her shoulder. Eastern Massachusetts. I wind, I wind, my true love to find the color of his hair, the clothes he'll wear, the day he is married to me. Throw a ball of yarn into a barn, old house or cellar, and wind, repeating the above lines, and the true love will appear and wind with you, to be tried at twelve o'clock at night on Halloween. Maine. Shortly before midnight a pure white bowl is procured that has never been touched by any lips save those of a newborn infant. If it is a woman whose fortune is to be tried, and generally is, the child must be a male. The bowl is filled with water from a spring well after which twenty-six pieces of white paper about an inch square, on each of which must be written one letter of the alphabet, are placed in the bowl with the letters turned downward. These must be dropped in as the clock strikes midnight, or all will fail. All being ready, the maiden interested repeats the lines. Kind fortune, tell me where he is, who my future lord shall be. From this bowl all that I claim is to know my lover's name. The bowl is then securely locked away, and must not be disturbed till sunrise the following morning. When she is placed before it blindfolded, she then picks out the same number of letters as there are in her own name. After these are all out, the bandage is removed from her eyes, and the paper letters spread out before her. She manages them so as to spell a man's name as best she can with the letters at her disposal. The name thus found will be that of her future husband. Trinity in Catalina Bay's N.F. On Halloween a girl is to go through a graveyard, steal a cabbage, and place it above the house door. The one on whom the cabbage falls as the door is opened is to be the girl's husband. Massachusetts. On Halloween, walk backwards from the front door, pick up dust or grass, bring it in, wrap it in paper, put it under your pillow, and dream. Pennsylvania. On Halloween, put an egg to roast before the fire, and leave the doors and windows open. When it begins to sweat, a cat will come in and turn it. After the cat will come the man you are to marry, and he will turn it. If you are to die unmarried, the shadow of a coffin will appear. Chestertown, Maryland. On Halloween, go upstairs backwards, eating a hard-boiled egg without salt and looking in the glass. You will see your future husband in the glass looking over your shoulder. St. John and B. On Halloween, go down the cellar stairs backwards, carrying a mirror into which you look. A face will be seen over your shoulder, which will be that of your future husband. General in the United States. On the last night of October, place a mirror and a clock in a room that has not been used for some time and at a quarter to twelve take a lighted candle and an apple, and finish eating the apple just as the clock strikes twelve, and then look in the mirror, and you will see your future husband. Alabama. On Halloween put a ring in a dish of mashed potatoes, and the one who gets the ring will be married first. Boston, Massachusetts. On Halloween mash potatoes and conceal in the mass a ring, a coin, and a button, divided into as many portions as there are persons present. The ring denotes marriage, the coin riches, and the button misfortune. Massachusetts. Silent Supper. On Halloween, set a table as if for supper, with as many seats at the table as there are girls, each girl standing behind a chair at the table. The one you are to marry will come in and take the chair in front of you. Chestertown, Maryland. On Halloween, write names of three men on three pieces of paper. 
roll them into balls, put these into balls made of Indian meal, wet so as to roll up, put the balls of meal into a basin of water, whichever one rises to the top bears the name of the one you'll marry. Salem, Massachusetts. On Halloween, girls place three saucers beside each other, two filled with earth and water, in the other a ring. They are respectively death, cloister, or unmarried life, and marriage. Convent School, Manchester, New Hampshire. On Easter Monday, put on one black garter and one yellow one, and wear them constantly, and you will have a proposal before the year is out. Chesterton, Maryland. Knit a garter and color it yellow. Don it on Easter Day. Wear it for a year. The wearer will be engaged before the year is out. Salem, Massachusetts. On May 1st, look in an unused well, and you'll see the face of your future husband or wife. New Hampshire. If you look into a well at exactly twelve o'clock on the first day of May, through a smoked glass, you will see your future husband. Alabama. Hold a mirror over a well on May 1st, and you will see the image of your future husband or wife. Talladega, Alabama. On Midsummer's Day, wet a new garment in running water and hang across a chair wrong side out to dry. At twelve noon or midnight, the one who is to marry you will be seen turning the garment. Labrador. Place an egg in a tumbler on St. John's Day. The tumbler being half filled with water, an egg is broken into it at early dawn, and is placed in the window, where it remains untouched till sundown. At that time the broken egg is supposed to have assumed a special shape, in which the ingenious maiden sees dimly outline the form of her future lord, or some emblem of his calling. Newfoundland. End of chapter 5 This recording is in the public domain. Six, Love and Marriage This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Current Superstitions by Fanny Bergen Chapter 6 Love and Marriage Numbers 327 to 430 Engagement 327 if you are a bridesmaid three times, you will never stand in the middle. Baldwinsville, New York. 328. Three times a bridesmaid, never a bride. New England. 329. Don't let another person put on your engagement ring, taken from your finger, or the engagement will be broken. Bathurst, New Brunswick. 330. The mother-in-law's test of the incoming daughter-in-law is to place a broom on the floor. If the daughter removes it and places it to one side, she will be a good housewife. If she steps over it, she will be a bad housewife. Labrador 331. A girl will have as many children after marriage as she has holders given her before marriage. Eastern Massachusetts Attire of the Bride 332. If you try on your wedding dress before the ceremony, you will not be happy. Cambridge, Massachusetts. 333. The bride should wear a borrowed garter and also a yellow garter. Boston, Massachusetts. 334. If a bride wear a yellow garter tied on by a girlfriend, the latter will be married inside the year. Eastern, Massachusetts. 335. The bride should wear something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Very common. 336. Wear no black at a wedding. It foretells ill luck. Massachusetts. 337. To be married in a brown dress is good luck. Black is bad. Bathurst, New Brunswick. 338. To be married in anything but white garments indicates bad luck for the bride, white being emblematical of innocence. They say that white is a heavenly hue. Another has added, it may be so, but the sky is blue. Massachusetts. 339. White is emblematical of holiness and truth. Blue is emblematical of peace and security. Bright green of true learning, as being the uniform clothing of nature. Maine and Massachusetts. 340. 
A bride must not look in the mirror after her toilet is complete, i.e., she must add a glove or some article after leaving the mirror. Maine and Massachusetts. 341. It is bad luck for a bride to keep any of the pins that she used when she was married. Alabama. 342. You will be unhappy if you lose your wedding ring. General in the United States. 343. If the bride just before leaving the house throws her bouquet over the banisters, the one who catches it next is to be wedded. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 344. If a drop of blood gets on a garment in the making, it will be one of your wedding garments. Lucky Days. 345. Mary and Lent live to repent. New York. 346. The day after a wedding is called the bride's day, the next day the groom's day. The condition of the weather on these days indicate whether their lives are to be happy or otherwise. Salem, Massachusetts, and Queen Anne's County, Maryland. 347. The wedding day is the bride's day, and the weather foretells her married life. The following is the bride's groom's, and his married life is shown in the same manner. The third day shows how they will live together. New York. 348. The two days before the wedding are the bride's days. If they are pleasant, she will have good luck, etc. Waltham, Massachusetts. 349. Marriage days. Monday, a bad day. Tuesday, you will have a good husband and will live long. Wednesday, a grand day. You will have a good husband and will live happily, but will have some trouble. Thursday, a bad day. Friday, a bad day. Saturday, no luck at all. Sunday, no luck at all. Baltimore, Maryland. Negro. 350. Wednesday is the luckiest day on which to be married. Saturday is the unluckiest. Friday is also unlucky. Bathurst, New Brunswick. The Marriage Ceremony. 351. Happy is the bride that the sun shines on. Northern Ohio. 352. If it rains on the wedding, the bride will cry all her married life. Talladega, Alabama. 353. To marry in a storm betokens an unhappy life. Peabody, Massachusetts. 354. It is unlucky to drop the ring at the marriage ceremony. New York. 355. A bride must step over the church sill with her right foot. Orange County, New York. 356. A double wedding is unlucky. One of the marriages will be unhappy. Massachusetts. 357. The pair to be married should stand in line with the cracks in the floor and not at right angles to them. Omaha, Nebraska. 358. When a couple are married and are driving off, if old shoes are thrown after them for good luck and one of the shoes lodges on the coach or carriage, it is a sign that one of the party will die before the year is out. Waltham, Massachusetts. 359. After the marriage ceremony is performed, the one that walks first from the altar is the one who will die first, either bride or groom. Alabama. 360. Old slippers or rice must be thrown after a bride for good luck. General in the United States. 361. If the younger sister is married before the elder, the latter will have to dance in a pig's trough. Western Massachusetts. 362. Runaway matches will prove unlucky. New York. 363. It is a sign of ill luck to take off the wedding ring. General in the United States. Courting and wedding signs. 364. If your apron string becomes loosened, then your true love is thinking of you. New York. 365. If your apron drops off, you'll lose your bow. The same is true if you lose your garter. Stevens Point, Wisconsin. 366. If you sink a bottle in water, it will weaken your love. Massachusetts. 367. Step over the broom and you will be an old maid. 368. If a girl wet her apron in washing, it is a sign that she will have a drunken husband. Labrador, Sicily Cove, Newfoundland, and New England. 369. To hang clothes wrong side out is an antidote for a drunken husband. Maine. 370. If a girl finds a cobweb in the door, it is a sign that her bow calls elsewhere. Northern Ohio. 371. To find many cobwebs in the kitchen means that there is no courting there. 
Boston, Massachusetts. 372. When the collar slips around and the opening comes to your ear, your lover is thinking of you. Salem, Massachusetts. 373. If you button your dress up unevenly, it is a sign that your lover is thinking of you. Miramichi, New Brunswick. 374. If you begin to button your dress unevenly, you will be a widow. Central Maine. 375. If you are cross when you are young, you will be an old maid. Alabama. 373. If you fall upstairs, you will have a new bow. Win, Maine. 377. Tumble upstairs and you'll not get married within the year. Hence old maids were formerly said to be careful how they went upstairs. New England. 378. Stumbling either up or downstairs means you'll be married inside a year. Cape Breton. 379. If you sit on a table, you will not be married that year. New England, New York, and Alabama. 380. Dropping hairpins from your hair means that your beau is thinking of you. General in the United States. 381. If a lady dons a gentleman's hat, it is a sign that she wants a kiss. 382. If your lips itch, it is a sign that someone will kiss you. Boston, Massachusetts. 383. If the outside of your nose itches, someone out of town loves you, and if the inside of your nose, then you are loved by someone in town. Western Massachusetts. 384. If a gentleman and lady are riding and are tipped out, they will be married. Nashua, New Hampshire. 385. Make a rhyme when talking, and you'll see your true love before Saturday night. Massachusetts. 386. Should your shoestring come unloosened, tis a sure sign and a true. At that very moment your true love thinks of you. New York. 387. If your shoe comes untied, your sweetheart is talking about you. Alabama. 388. If you want to sneeze and can't, it is a sign someone loves you and doesn't dare to tell it. Boston, Massachusetts. 389. If you can't drink a cup of tea, you must be lovesick. Labrador. 390. Stub your toe, see your bow. Massachusetts and Maine. 391. If four persons cross hands in shaking hands on taking leave, one will marry before the year is out. Prince Edward Island, Eastern Massachusetts, and New York. 392. If hands are crossed at the table while passing a dish, a wedding will follow. The top hand belongs to the person who will be married. Pennsylvania. 393. To have two teaspoons in a saucer signifies marriage in a year. 394. If a gentleman stayed to dinner and by accident got two knives, two forks, or two spoons at his plate, he would be married within a year and there was no help for it. Connecticut. 395. Knock over your chair on rising from the table and you won't get married that year. Peabody, Massachusetts, New York, and Talladega, Alabama. 396. If a girl sew a button on the clothing of a marriageable man, she will marry him within the year. New England. 397. If you have a dress with rings for a figure in it, it is a sign that you will be married before it is worn out. New York. 398. If you have hearts in a figure in a dress or in a shawl, you will be married before it is worn out. New York. 399. If you have a new dress and there are roses in it, the person who owns the dress will be married before the dress is worn out. Salem, Massachusetts. 400. Pins in the front of a dress waist are a sign that the wearer will be an old maid. New Hampshire. 401. If in making a dress the thread kinks badly, the person for whom it is made will either die or get married before the dress is worn out. Alabama. 402. If you have a dress tried on, and any pin catches in the underclothing, every pin means that it is a year before you will be married. Hence dressmakers are especially careful to pin the dress in such a way that it will slip off easily. Boston, Massachusetts. 403. If you have good success in building a fire, you will have a smart husband. If bad success, a lazy husband. St. John, New Brunswick, and Ohio. 404. If a lock of hair over the forehead, a widow's lock, be cut before marriage, the girl will be a widow. Labrador. 405. Get a lady friend to knit you a yellow garter. She must ask a gentleman unknown to you to knit ten rows. You will meet and marry the gentleman within a year. 
406. The exchange of one yellow garter means a proposal in six months. Washington, D.C. 407. If a girl wears a yellow garter, which has been given to her every day for a year, or every day and night for six months, at the end of that time she will be married. Montreal. 408. If you burn a lover's letter, he will never marry you. Central Maine. 409. If at a dinner a single person is inadvertently placed between two married people, husband or wife, it means marriage for him or her within a year. 410. If you pass between two men on the street, you'll marry both of them sometime. Champaign, Illinois. 411. If you drop a knitting needle, you won't be married during the present year. 412. If you break many needles in a garment, it will be worn at a wedding. 413. If you draw blood from the prick of a needle while making a garment, it is a sign you will be kissed the first time you wear it. Boston, Massachusetts. 414. Should needles break while sewing on a new garment, it is a sign that the owner will be married before it is worn out. New York. 415. When a young man goes to see a girl for the first time, and the signs of the zodiac are in the heart, they will one day marry. Harmony, Maine. 416. If you step on a cigar stub, you will marry the first man you meet. Salem, Massachusetts. 417. Two spoons in a cup is the sign of a wedding. Bathurst, New Brunswick, and Wisconsin. 418. If you get two spoons in your cup or saucer, you'll marry a second husband or wife. 419. If a couple out walking together stumble, it is a sign that they will be married. Labrador. 420. Sit on the table, married before you're able. Matawamkig, Maine. 421. If a girl gets the last piece of bread on a plate at the table, she will have a handsome husband. Massachusetts. 422. If all of three dishes at the table are eaten, all of the unmarried people at the table will be married within the year. Northern Massachusetts. 423. If the tea kettle boils, you will boil your bow away, is an old saying. Salem, Massachusetts. 424. If you have a cup of tea handed to you, and there are little bits floating on the top, they represent the number of husbands you will have, one, two, or three. 425. A girl that takes her thimble to the table will be an old maid. Northern Ohio. 426. Three in a row, meet your beau. The one in the middle will have him. Massachusetts. 427. Three lamps in a row. The one who sets down the third will will be soon married. Massachusetts. 428. Three lamps in a row foretell a wedding in the family. New York. 429. To look into a tumbler when you are drinking is a sign that you will be an old maid. If you look over the side, you are a flirt. Massachusetts. 430. To wash the hands under a pump denotes that you will be a widow. Chesterton, Maryland. End of section 6. Section 7 Wishes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Silver. Current Superstitions by Fanny Bargan. Chapter 7 Wishes. Number 431 to 462. If you take a baby in your arms for the first time, and at the same time wish, you will get your wish before the year is out. Quebec Take your Bible and wish. If it opens at, and it came to pass, you will get your wish. Wish upon the candle on blowing it out. If it glows long, you will get your wish. If it smokes, it signifies a death. Ohio if a speck of carbon comes on the wick when burning, and you wish for something, wet your finger and touch the speck. If it sticks to your finger, you will get the wish, and vice versa. Plymouth, O. Oh. Swallow a chicken's heart whole and make a wish. It will come true. 
Pennsylvania and Ohio. Throw an egg out of the second-story window and wish. If it does not break, you will get your wish. Dear Isle, M.E. Throw an eyelash over your shoulder. If it falls from your finger in doing this, your wish will come true. If it remains on the finger, your wish will not come to pass. New York Find a stray eyelash, place it on the back of the hand with a wish, blow it off. If it blows off at the first trial, the wish will come true. St. John and B. in Pennsylvania Put a loose eyelash on the back of your hand. It signifies a letter. Wish from whom the letter may come, carry it three times around your head, then throw it over your shoulder, and you will get your wish. New England Put an eye-winker down inside your clothes, wish, and you'll get your wish. Maine Put an eye-winker on the back of the hand, knock that hand with the other so as to throw the eye-winker over the shoulder, and at the same time wish. If the eye-winker is not seen again, the wish will come true. Stoneham, Massachusetts If you wish on the first thing you eat in the season, the wish will come true. Wish with two paper slips or grass blades, the ends only being shown. The longer wins. Wish on a load of hay, and you'll be sure to get it. Win, M.E. Wish when you see a hay cart, don't look at it again, and you'll get the wish. New Jersey See a white horse, don't look at his tail, but wish. Wish on a calico horse you may wish on a row of empty barrels, or on a piebald horse, but you must not look on the object a second time. Wish on a load of empty barrels, and you will get your wish. Write the names of one hundred people, who, by request, have bowed to you, bury the paper in a secret spot, and at the same time wish. If no one sees you, you will get your wish. Wish while holding a lighted match until it is extinct, and you'll get the wish. If by chance two use the same words, lock the little fingers and wish before speaking, saying Shakespeare at the end. Eastern Massachusetts Let two persons break the wishing bone of a fowl, the one who gets the longest piece will get his wish. New Jersey and Ohio if you say two sentences that rhyme, make a wish. Then if you make a rhyme unintentionally and wish before you speak again, your wish will come to pass. Baldwin's Will, New York When you first see a sleigh in the fall of the year, make a wish and you will get it. Win, M.E. Wish at the first snowflake of the season and you will get your wish. Westport, Massachusetts Put a ring on the finger of another person, saying, I wish it on until such a time, and if it is not removed before the expiration of the period named, the wish will come to pass. Connecticut and Ohio When you see a falling star, wish. New Jersey To wish on a star, when you see the first star come out, say, Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Wish what you please and it will come true, but the wish must not be mentioned to any one. Eastern Massachusetts Count nine evening stars in succession and you will have your wish. Massachusetts Capture a floating thistle down, breathe on it, make a wish to see or hear from an absent friend, blow in his or her supposed direction, and it will carry your message. Make a wish while throwing a leaf into running water. If it lands right side up, you will have your wish or good luck. Lebanon, N.H. End of chapter 7